Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on January 16th, 2023. Welcome to another Surviving Day on the Planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your world update on space weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Checking out here the last 48 hours on our sun as we've seen three M-class solar flares, earth-facing positions, no CMEs in an earth-directing fashion. But still some amazing fiery action here from those sunspot regions cresting in. And the one on the left is humongous. Looking at the last 24 hours incoming, the one on your left hand side is a very large sunspot and I'll be showing you that in next video. Looking at the last 48 hours outgoing. Plasma tornado on the left hand side there. And as well, M-class solar flare taking off in an outgoing fashion. Having a closer look at the regions that fired off the M-class solar flares, as we've seen three the last 48 hours. Spectacular imagery here by Solar D Dynamics Observatory. Very active indeed. Having a look at multi-spectrum. Here we're able to see plasma filaments, coronal holes, and of course the active sunspot regions. 193 angstroms here. And we can see it our heliosphere in action. And as well, looking for darkened regions on the disk for coronal holes. And there is not much developing at all. Just some very active sunspots for solar cycle 25. Having a look here at space weather conditions as we are under a G1 minor geomagnetic storm impacts are possible. Minor impact on satellite. Solar X-ray flux remains in a C range. There are the three M-class solar flares. Geomagnetic activity sitting at about KP2 but hopped up to KP5 yesterday and earlier today. Having a look at ISPWA Space Prediction Spiral, you can see a CME detected and taking off towards Mercury, and it is set to give us a glancing blow January 19th. Looking at the Aurora forecast for the next 24 hours, as it will be heightened over parts of Western Europe and over Greenland. Real-time solar wind, we're sitting right now at about 450 kilometers per second, after being up and over 500 overnight last night, things seem to be calming down a little bit. Having a look at our pressure planes, this is our magnetosphere in action, showing the pressure on our planet. Alaska 3, showing all the energies taking off from our sun the last two days. 14th into the 16th. Schumann resonance is a power of 24 for today. Heightened energy there and has been up above 20 since yesterday. Amplitude 24, quality 9.6, power 18. Now let's get to earthquakes. We're going to Put in a setting here for the last 48 hours i haven't uploaded in two days thank you everybody for your patience and watching we're going to start out here with the largest earthquake the last 48 hours 6.3 earthquake bone and islands japan region 405 kilometer depth and this was a forecasted region from last video 6.2 northern sumatra indonesia 37 kilometer depth and that was late last night Solomon Islands seeing activity here most recently. Port Oroi, Vanuatu. No deep earthquakes to talk about through Tonga today. Notable earthquake here, 4.6 Meadow Lakes, Alaska, 25 kilometer depth. Minor seismicity still increasing through the region. 
quiet across the United States, largest being the 3.4 there, Northern California. Guatemala, something is a-brewing here. Many erupting volcanoes, 5.2 and uh, four other earthquakes ranging 4.0 to 4.5. Puerto Rico, 4.1 there. Dominican Republic, coming back to life. South America, Salta, Argentina, 5.0 and a 558-kilometer depth, as well as Calama, Chile, and a notable there off the Nazca Plate. And Albania seeing some activity as well the last two days, 4.8, ranging 4.1 and 4.4. And that's the last 48 hours of earthquakes across the USGS map. Quick browse here at the last seven days for shakers across the world. And take this moment to thank everybody for watching and choosing daily events worldwide, keeping humanity aware and prepared to daily events, earthquakes, volcanoes, space weather, and of course, extreme weather. It's all about love and awareness here, no fear. Notable, all the deep earthquakes there, Tonga, and as well through the Banda Sea. As of late, you've seen quite a few deep earthquakes penetrating the core of our Earth. Now let's get to Pacific Disaster Center, showing the most recent satellite imagery from around the world, and as well the most recent volcanoes getting updated. Pretty strong system there in the Atlantic. Possible tropical system developing there in the central Atlantic and as well one just off the coast of the Atlantic provinces, Canada. 177 active hazards on the Pacific Disaster Center. A lot of them are floods along the west coast, California, and as well through the Amazon. Browsing through here, looking for the most recent volcanoes, looking at Sangay in Ecuador. Popo in Mexico, Sabancaya in Peru, Reventador in Ecuador, Fuego in Guatemala, Luatolo, Indonesia, Ibu, Indonesia, Semeru, Indonesia, Villarica in Chile. That's about 11 volcanoes getting updated today. Stay tuned. We will have the volcanic activity report coming soon. Just going to have a quick glance here at satellite imagery around the world as there are some pretty big systems heading towards Madagascar and as well as some colder temperatures heading towards Europe. Things may dry out a little bit after this last system coming for California. Atmospheric river shifting a little bit with those upper level winds changing quickly. Strong winter storm moving through center of Russia into the Tibetan Plateau, watching some moisture and fog come out of there, and very wet and windy across the United Kingdom and parts of Western Central Europe. World weather forecast, we've got three large low pressure systems affecting North America this week. One of them by Wednesday is going to bring some extreme weather to the Gulf states yet again. Thoughts and prayers going out to everybody that was affected through those extreme weather events last weekend. Large low pressure system bringing in snow and as well windy conditions for the Atlantic provinces. Ontario is going to see some freezing rain and maybe a couple centimeters of snow overlooking the west coast. Lots of rain for BC, especially in the long range next Friday. Things drying out across the west coast of the United States and then the Colorado low developing. Overlooking South America, not much to talk about except for daily evaporation rains. Could be heavy at times through parts of Buenos Aires, Rio de Janeiro. And then we get to Madagascar here in South Africa. As we've got two tropical systems tracking towards Madagascar and they're going to join forces by Wednesday. And then rake down the east coast of Madagascar. Heads up, as this system is going to be heading towards Mauritius and Reunion, those two small islands east of Madagascar, and then another tropical system 
tracking in behind that. So very strong systems here developing for Madagascar and South Africa. Daily evaporation rains. Other than that, no major systems affecting you. But this will be quite an event as two tropical systems merge, join forces, and rake down the northeast corner of Madagascar. Overlooking Europe, lots of moisture around and lots of wind. And then watching another system here move into the Mediterranean, bringing stormy conditions towards Italy. And then that will move eastward by Sunday to the center of the Mediterranean. Overlooking Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Indonesia. Daily evaporation rains, no major tropical systems developing for you. And then overlooking Australia and New Zealand. As you've got a tropical system that may give a brushing to northeastern parts, but then it's going to scoot out towards New Caledonia. Small low pressure system affecting southeastern corner of the United or Australia in the long range forecast. Other than that, no major systems. Quick look here, looking over the Pacific for the next week. As most of these storms are heading northward towards BC. So BC will be on watch for the next flood event and atmospheric river warning. Wanted to show you here the upper level winds. This is our polar vortex right now. This is what fuels our winter. 404 kilometers an hour at 100,000 feet. But I wanted to show you here, look at these winds. As a lot of these winds are coming from North America and heading westward. I'm going to go back to last year at this time. And look at the difference here towards the equator. Look at all these upper level winds that are moving eastward around Hawaii and towards the equator. And then we get to now. And look at the difference, folks. This is a big change. Pull shift is evident. And it is here. I do believe it is here. Our North Pole has moved dramatically towards Siberia. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily do. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.